So we can multiply it can of beta. The oxygen, how many matter is that? But it is not beneficial after that. So after that, quickly its conversion is easy. It is replaced by hemoglobin A up to some extent by hemoglobin A. The problem is the upper phase. In the last, whenever there is oxygen, oxygen hemoglobin is there. And it is also in the rest that the intact polyurethane can combine also with nitric oxide. In which I say it can by nitric oxide. So it helps to carry some nitric oxide in the Carbon 
every part of the two carbon dioxide relations and by the ground it is the oxygenated oxygenated gas and deoxygenated gas. Suppose one gas is HBO and it is on the A. And there is two parts, and you can consider that this L and the R will have some blood is 48 ml. 48 ml per deciliter, and 52 ml will be less than. So, this, in this case, you can consider this is R will have and this will be better than R will have. As it is shifting of this, as it is shifting of this star, is responsible for 50% increase in the 50% increase in the L O. 50% increase in the L O. There is a carry carbon dioxide is carry. If there is no shifting, if there is no shifting, then this amount of carbon dioxide were added to the carbon dioxide level of the pure. As there is shifting of this car, additional amount it can be carried. Increase in the volume. In the volume is produced due to the shifting of the star, due to deoxygenation. And in the other end, though for this figure, it is apparent that the shifting is essentially the same. Normally, it is produced. And so the other one is more of it. Thank you. 
multiply this value with one of protein groups. Part So if it is to 200, multiply by 1 for 4 zero, and then 1. And to convert this into minimum, one row of gaps is equal to, at a minute, 22.4 zero. 
Millennium will only be dealt with in the nature class, not in the dissection of Because to dissect the Millennium, a human, and for that matter in anatomy, in cadaver, we have to put the cadaver in a special posture. And the special posture is our cadaver that is after all. Because that special posture, precisely that special posture, posture to which a cadaver has to be subjected to, is only at all in life. Like the Hindu of that who often we don't adopt that posture. Because we adopt that posture. So you are adopt that now, Pamela Rosa Kodai Lapsina. So we adopt that posture. But normally we say, during birth of a child, during birth of a child, the mother, mother's posture, normal delivery of a child. To the normal part passage, mother get the posture in the world. So do you know that posture? What is the name of that posture? Yes. Yes. Very good. What is it? That posture is being called as lithotomy posture. That is the first thing that one must know about before, before going on or before embarking on to the perineum, anatomy of perineum, one must need to know. The special posture that we must have to adopt, the cadaver has to adopt, we have to make the cadaver lie in that posture. If I say posture, it is a that posture is being called as the lithotomy posture. It is a young now. Lithotomy posture. Lithotomy posture. Lithotomy. This lithotomy posture means. By this term we mean the water of the same cadaver or the person should be at the end of the table. The water, the waters of the person or the cadaver should be at the end of the table. Obviously at the full end of the table at the end. The hips have to be placed and kept down. The hips have to be placed and abducted. If there is a place to the hole, abduct to the hole. Because place abduct to the hole. And the knees have to be placed. The knees have to be placed. Hips, hips have to be placed and abducted. The knees have to be placed. So to make the category line in that posture, in the other posture, we need a wooden frame. In our days, plenty of such wooden frames are available in all the academic departments. Because, but nowadays, such wooden frames you will not find in most of the academic departments, in most of the medical colleges. I have not seen none of the NSC inspectors are asking us, please show us lithography frame, lithography wooden frame. Therefore, in most of the cases, dissection of perineum is not done. I am going to go to the that is usually the norm. It has already covered our theory class, lecture class. Why do you think that the cover of the perineum idea of why not? So, nothing will We will try our best. Make you what is there in the perineum. Now then, to show the perineum in its entirety or length, the person has to be in the lithotomy posture. In the lithotomy posture, when the person is in the lithotomy posture, which part of our body we can call as the perineum? Perineum can properly be seen and felt only in that posture. So let me know as it will dry up. This is the anterior abdominal wall. This is the anterior infraumbilical abdominal wall. Infraumbilical abdominal wall. 
the right band. Towards the ventral midline, 
which in winter what happens in the scooter also how pms are there i can i think we have to you know what happens in winter and what happens in summer when the body temperature rises there will be sagging of the scooter pumps in case of winter there will be crash but you will be able to do it because you will be able to do it you will be able to do it but you will be able to do it you will be able to do it you will be able to do it that dark goes on that involuntary muscle which responds to outside temperature and body temperature this that involuntary muscle the right muscle body continues with that dark goes on and dark
যে নামটা সুপ্রিম কেজ কি নাম হবে অডি অডি তে আছে এই জন্য কম্পাস ফর করা কেবার অডি মেনিসে বল যখন ঢুকলো এক মিনিট অডি তে যখন ঢুকলো এক মিনিট শুরু কম্পাস বল কোন ঝামেলা নেই এটা মাল মেনিস অডি মেনিসে গেল কম্পাস মানে অডি কম্পাস বল
platform we call them as lamina propria and these things can be moved in your muscle which is known as muscular species. These are thin smooth muscles present to it. Then we have the submucosa which has these glands, if it is present, we have the blood vessel, nerves, etc. etc. the same principle and lymphatics as well. If it is present in a particular segment. Then we have the muscle layer, outer longitudinal inner segment, that's the same root which is present in here. And outermost, which is the lining itself, which is covered with the peritoneum lining into this and having this particular property which is present on the outer side. So same principle lies on here. The only thing which is present in this particular region, this uh, large intestine, we'll be focusing on the large intestine slides, which is prevailing on the appendix. This is kind of uh, important for us, is because we see the number of cases on this large intestine diseases which surfaces as, as an undergrad or as a, as a MBBS kind of situation, which is appendix and related to the problem with the appendix, we call it appendicitis, or cleared from some appendical errors. So this particular histological aspects of the large intestine involving this particular appendix we are going to highlight. So we are going to emphasize the large intestine which is of which will be narrowing it down or zooming it down into the appendix and what are the special features this appendix has. So before we move into the appendix, general feature of the appendix which is a kind of diabetic plum or projection from the cecum which is coming out, we are seeing these things developing from this abdomen as a single part which again develops in the diverticulum which is known as appendicular diverticulum which comes into it. It is a part of the large guard and it is kind of like a, having a particular length it has some normal positions of the appendix which is more common or less common varieties are there that you know that theoretically is over there. It has a blood supply and it has particular artery to supply to it and if you have a disease on this particular appendix in form of the infections, we call them as acute appendicitis or chronic appendicitis, appendicular abscess, etc. etc. the disease involving it. Right? It's a pretty common this particular appendix infections. That's why we have to know about that. Clinically, whenever you are examining a patient, we should be knowing where this particular appendix pains stays there, and when you are examining a patient, where to find the appendix area, like which is known as McBarney's point. How to find the McBarney's point? What are the like landmarks to search for it? And etc. Right? So those things are exam important areas which is related to it. Now the appendix region is supplied with this particular right ear fossa region. If you have a pain with the appendix, it's largely reason, a uh, large region over this particular appendix region, which pain which stays on the T10 dermatome. The T10 dermatome is roughly around this umbilical. So umbilicus or very umbilical pain is a hallmark which may be just the center to the right side or maybe the center of the abdomen the patient may be complaining of. And if you press on the back one is point, patient may be shouting on the brain. And etc. Et so the list of the things is known to us, right? Blood supply, etc. Et other features about the appendix is appendix is having tons of lymph nodes there. So this particular appendix have got lymph nodes. When we are young, as the time progresses, we move towards the teenage, we lose the numbers of the lymph nodes. Right. So whenever we have this particular appendix in young individual, it's fitted with a large number of lymphoid aggregations. Now you can imagine these lymph nodes can go in hypertrophy or increases in size if you have infections. <coughs> can it be related to? If you have infections, the lymph node grows. Is it related? Is it true or not? If you have infections, you see lymph nodes are swelling up. Is it true or not? Yes. Why? Why the lymph nodes will be enlarged in case of the infections? So why the lymph nodes? Why the lymph nodes are enlarged in any any kind of infections? That is the site for. So why you see lymph nodes are enlarged in case of infections? You have a tonsil infection. You see that something bumps comes into the neck under the angle region. What these things swelling coming up? The lymph nodes are enlarged. So why do the enlargement of the lymph node happens in infections? What do the lymph nodes do? So I know you know the things and you are not letting me know so that I will be getting wiser knowing your knowledge. That's why you are reserving it with you or you are not going to share that? Yes? So if I know that I will be treating better patients than you, what you are saying? So if you have any knowledge you can share with me so that I can get little wiser and can treat my patients a little better. 
So why linear enlarge in any interest? So learn physiology, right? Blood and lymphatic system. Learn. So what is physiology people are doing there? No, they are doing. You aren't doing nothing. You are not populating. You are sitting there and reading like Gitanya. <laughs> Even they are talk, talking about the RBC, WBC, you are reading something like poets, poets literature. So what are the functions of the limbs, or limb nodes? Ki kaj kore? Saan ki kaj kore wala? Limb nodes gulo? Limb nodes gulo kaj ki kichu kaja chena ki khali aase jaya, hao khaya, beri jaya. Yes, I am best. <laughs> so the functions of the lymphocytes in the defense, they are in the defense business. So they are manufacturing the lymphocytes, which are the defense cells. The house of this particular lymphocyte productions, they are housed in the lymph nodes. So if you have increased numbers of the pathogens, they need to produce more and more wild shortages. That's why these particular lymph nodes enlarge, right? So if you have any kind of gut infections, the lymph nodes inside the gut will be enlarged. Is it true or not? If you have an infection in the throat, the lymph nodes which is present in the neck region will be enlarged according because they are dealing with the germs and the pathogens out there. The so same thing happens in case of this particular appendix, we have the lymph nodes present when we are young. And those lymph nodes can get enlarged if you have infections in the abdomen. In case of the children, they are more frequently getting this particular abdominal infections. If they are getting more frequent abdominal infections, that means there are likelihood of these particular lymph nodes to get enlarged. So similar to that, rest part of the gut will have an increased lymph node in productions, and so is the lymph nodes which is present inside this particular appendix. Now within this appendix, if you have the lymph node enlargements, the cavity within this particular lumen of the appendix will be narrow, will be compressed because they are going in size, so lumen will be narrow. So as a result, if you have a narrow lumen inside this particular appendix, the food material or any kind of things getting inside cannot come out and that leads this particular organ vulnerable to have blockage which leads to acute appendicitis. So that's why in case of the kids, before teenage, we see appendicitis or acute appendicitis in more in occurrence. So if you see in this particular acute appendicitis in like a like an age of mind, it's not very frequent. Alright, so if you are suspecting a patient coming of my age with pain like here, and you are saying you have acute appendicitis, that the 95% chances of false diagnosis. Okay, so infections of the acute appendicitis, which more frequently happens in young kids before teenage. What is teenage? 1960, 15, that teenager. The more we go towards this adolescent, towards this particular adulthood, there are a number of these lymph nodes strings. And the lumen of this particular appendix is very wide. So acute appendicitis is more frequent in case of the children. Alright? Because of the infections. So in case of this particular appendix, when you are seeing here, along with this particular codes, which you see here, three codes are there. We want to see some kind of lymph nodes placed inside as well. All right, besides this special feature. So this is the special feature about the appendix when you are going through. So this is the parts of the large intestine, and this is the colon area, and part of the colon which you're seeing here. We're going to see these particular features. So we have the mucosa, the mucosa, and muscle layer at the outer side there. So these are the same feature of these particular colons or large intestine mass. So whenever you are seeing the colons, we have the mucosa which has the epithelium cells. How these particular cells look like? They look like column. So column or epithelium cells, they are there. 
and present in between the columnar cells, plenty of mucosecretory glands are there. We call these glands which is present inside the mucosecretory gland or Brunner's gland. They are present plentifully on oblate cells. They are present within this particular region, which is this simple columnar epithelium. And then we have this particular gland which is going down, maybe have a tubular branching. We call find as tubular branching glands present towards this particular epithelium, towards this particular lamina propria. Getting in there, and this particular lamina propria, they have got like the same thing which is having kind of like lymph follicles, depending on which side we are seeing here, and muscularis mucosic, which is present in some of these particular, like a bottom end of this one. Some mucosa may have this particular connective tissue, which is this particular region has like a, like a lymph nodes and, and kind of like a, like a blood vessel, nerves, etc., etc., which this particular glands has, uh, or which this particular layer has. Then we have the muscle layer, same two muscle layers which is present in, in this particular region, and the outer layer which is appendage here. So whenever you are seeing this particular histology of this particular gland, it looks like that. Plenty of white dots are there, and this particular thing which is going down a little bit over here, these are the glands which is going down. If you zoom this or enlarge this particular thing, it looks like this. So this is the gland which is going to this particular lamina propria, getting down here, below this particular cells which is present, which is columnar, tall cells which is present. They may have microvilli on the on, on them, a majority of them do not have the microvilli of this particular region and in these white cells which you are seeing here, these are goblet cells, mucosecretory glands which is present in the cell. So these are the general features which is we are going to see in case of this particular colon or large intestine. Now taking from this particular colon, we are emphasizing on part of the large intestine which is the beginning part, part of the cecum appendix which is we are emphasizing on. We have to see this particular region. Uh, the appendix microanatomy. So we start with the same thing. We have mucosa, submucosa, muscle layer, and the adventitia. Mucosa over here, we have the columnar same epithelium, with maybe having microvilli, which is at the beginning part, maybe present. And interspace between these particular cells, we have this particular mucosecretory cells, which looks like a white cells. We call them as goblet cells. And there are kind of sub kind of end cells are there. These are the kind of like immune factor cells which is present. Then we have this particular region may have this particular extensions as a kind of like a glands which is extending towards this lamina propria. So this mucus layer which have got cells which is lying here, same with columnar epithelium, they may be dipping down, making a glands and coming up, making a tubular or short tubular intestinal glands which are present. And they are also lined by the same kind of epithelium, simple kind of epithelium which is tall looking, simple columnar epithelium. Right? Now, the feature over here is that concerning over here, this lamina propria of this region, as I said, this is a lymphoid organ and treated with this particular small, medium, large, medium side lymphoid follicles. So, this particular region has got these features about presence of this particular mucosa at this lamina propria region where the gland ends. We may find a collection of these lymph nodes, which is aggregates of the lymph nodes which may be present, and under to it, we have this particular muscular mucosa, then we have the submucosa extended. Submucosa layer is pretty small. So if you see this particular layer on this histological picture, this is what we are seeing here, the lining epithelium, tall columnar cells dipping down, making a kind of like a tube, so tubular epithelium which is going over there and making this particular glands. In between the cells, we may might see some kind of white particles in here, which are like other goblet cells. And then we have this particular lamina propria starting here. And within this lamina propria, we see this particular region which is having got like collections of the lymph nodes which is present there. This lymph node may be discrete, maybe of various sizes. And then after that, we have a very thin layer of this muscular mucosa. Then we have the submucosa which is very compressed out here. Have got glands and kind of uh, have these blood vessels, nerve cells present in here. Then we have this particular muscle layer which is present in there, arranged into two layers inner circular, outer longitudinal and this appendicia which is present in it. So this is appendix having got like the same features, lining epithelium, columnar simple type of epithelium which is having plenty of the goblet cells, the lamina propria of this particular mucosa have got like a glands along with these follicles which is known as the lymphoid follicles. This is the hormone thing to help us to identify this. Muscular mucosa, smooth muscle layer, doesn't have much thickness. Then submucosa, lymphoid follicles, whichever you have seen, may be extending. 
depending on the status of this particular appendix. If it is a very hypertrophic or energetic state, the lymph nodes are that enlarged that can enclose to this particular submucosal layer. Then we have the muscle layer, then we have this particular advantage layer. So this is how these particular layers of this appendix are housed. This is how we are seeing the schematic picture, this is how it looks like, this particular the microscopic picture. So if you are seeing this particular thing, you can identify this is the lumen site, this is the epithelium of course, then if this is a gland of the epithelium which is going down, and then you can see this particular thing as a bump over here and collections which is seen here as a lymph follicles or lymph nodes. So this is lymph nodes which is present. They may be just like a present together, clustered in a way, they may be just like a sparsely present. If you zoom these things, they may look like, like this. So collections of the lymph nodes which is present in the lamina propria, they may be extending to the under layer of the lamina propria which is submucosal layer. So this is how this particular lymph nodes along with these particular layers of this particular appendix do look like. Now can I don't have to focus in here? So we focus in this particular region. We have one, two, three, four slides are there, placed in there. So find this particular lumen, going to this particular slide, then you identify this particular epithelium, then you go to this particular layer which is below the epithelium, that means you are going to the lamina propria, lamina propria going to find out the lymph nodes. Lymph nodes may be collectively very well placed, some of the slides are very well placed lymph nodes are there. They may be present in the lamina propria and extending down to the submucosa. Submucosa may not be able to very be verify there. You may not see the very good submucosa layer there because they are approaching it. And then we have the muscle layer and outer. So whenever you identify the identifying features of this particular thing will be there, the four layers, presence of this particular region, which has got epithelium, which epithelium cells consisting of the columnar tall cells and interspace between the goblet mucosecretory cells. This particular mucosa has got like a lamina propria, which is having collections of the lymph nodes, which is the problem of the lymph nodes may be approaching towards this particular the submucosa layer. Submucosa layer has got blood vessels present to it, muscle layer, which is hard layer, which is present, has got divided into two layers, inner circular, outer layer, and fourth layer, which is available. So these are the three, four eye different features. Whenever you identify this particular organ, you do have mm -hmm. Okay? So what kind of cells this epithelium has? Small cells. Or two other cells. The glands are there. What kind of glands? Glands are there. So what are the lining cells of the glands? Okay. So what the mucosa have, like uh, this particular mucosa have got like a lamina appropriate feature of? Lymph nodes. Lymph nodes may be present within the lymph lamina propria, that means in the mucosa layer, maybe going down. Maybe just like a big enough submarge to this particular submucosa layer, which may be going down. Submucosa may have blood vessels, nerve, lymphatics, etc. The same features. Then muscle layer, and this is the outer layer of the Okay? So, the outer layer of the body. Okay. Okay, so four slides are there. Go to the slides, splitting into groups and observing.
and it contains the enzymes pancreatic amylase pancreatic lipase and the protease so pancreatic enzymes we know amylase lipase and protease like epsilon we activate it is get activated it within the movement of the duodenum and the secretion is secreted within the movement of the second part of the duodenum and within the duodenum and within the small intestine actually it helps in digestion and also by that opens through the same opening to the mouth and ample of water and ultimately both opens in the major duodenal papilla which is situated 8 to 10 centimeters away so sorry 8 to 10 centimeters whether it is centimeter or millimeter centimeter from 8 to 10 centimeter from from the pylorus, pyloric end of the stomach, because before that we are getting the stomach. Okay, this is the first part of the stomach. So this is the exocrine part. Now about the endocrine part. If you see the histology of the pancreas, we see there are multiple serosacinae, and in between the serosacinae we get. The islets of Langer Hans. This islets of Langer Hans contains alpha, beta, and delta cells, which secretes some hormones like glucagon, like insulin, like somatostatin, like pancreatic peptides. Okay. So it's a mixed blend. Now, why it is situated? It is situated in the posterior abdominal wall. We have seen in the in our cadaver, it is present within the posterior abdominal wall, and transversely it lies, and it is clustered behind the peritoneum. So it's a retroperitoneal structure. Now it has got several. You can see in the body, you can see the, uh, the structure. If you see the, the structure of the pancreas, it is, you can see there are some lobulations. And pancreas. That means pan means whole, creas means flesh. So it's, a, it's totally a fleshy material which doesn't have any other thing. Now what is the name? From there up to this. It is around 10 to 15 centimeters. What is about weight? It is around? How much is it? Around 90 grams, 85 to 90 grams. How much is it? 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 Now it has got one head. Globular head. But anterior posteriorly that head is flattened. That place head, this is the head. And head is flattened. <laughs> <laughs> Enough. 
can see this is the first part, this is the second part and third part of the Divinam within the first, second and third part of the Divinam. It is accommodated. And in between the Divinam, first, second and third part of the Divinam and the head of the pancreas, they rise. Okay. Arterial anastomosis between the superior pancreas before the original artery, which we can see here, and inferior pancreas before the original artery, superior pancreas before the original artery, is the branch of the gastrointestinal artery, which is again a branch from the hepatic, common hepatic artery, and this is again a branch from the celiac tract. This is depressing, this is steric artery, this is common hepatic, this is the hepatic artery proper. So this is the arterial amnestopulsis we can see in between the head of the pancreas and the life process goes towards the midline. This is hook or uncinet. Hook means uncinet. The meaning of the uncinet is hook because through the hook of the uncinet process, a vascular channel is hanging. The hook is hanging. The hook is for hanging. What is hanging? The superior recently vessels. You can see this is the aorta. Here you can see the aorta. This is the ciliac trunk. This is the Inferior recently, so, so it is hooking. So this is the unseen process. So ultimately this is the head. Now in, it is present in the posterior abdominal wall. So what are the structures in front? In between the anterior abdominal wall and the posterior abdominal wall, we can, we can see the small intestine. Okay. And on either side, there are large gut. Okay. We can see the large gut. Okay. And one large gut we know that there is the ascending column that goes transversely, the transverse column it goes up to the skin. Then this is the descending colon. So this transverse colon is present between the head and the small intestine. So this transverse colon or trans and transverse mesocolon they will occupy over the head of the pancreas. Thank you. Transverse colon and mesocolon will occupy over the head of the pancreas. So anteriorly it is related with transverse colon and transverse post mesocolon. Sometimes generally the head is attached with transverse colon and transverse mesocolon by a connective tissue generally. But sometimes the mesocolon can extend. We know the mesocolon. You know what? What is the mesocolon? Now about 
the posterior relation? Posteriorly, we can see the opening of this. Then we can see the we can see the bile bile is coming from the upper part. It is going behind the first part. Where it is yet going behind the head. And ultimately, it pierces the second part of the duodenum. To the head of the pancreas. If we go more behind, we can see this venous channel. That is inferior vena cava. So, inferior vena cava is related posterior to the head. If we, go, if we want to go behind the inferior vena cava, what we can find? First body of first and second lumbar vertebra we will get we will get the right class of the diaphragm. This is the left class. Left class is not in relation. The right class is in the behind inferior vena cava we will get the right class as well as a muscle which is taking origin from the lumbar vertebras and from the, from the last thoracic vertebra and it is a very prominent muscle we have seen in the posterior abdominal wall and all the branches of the lumbar flexors are related to this muscle this is nothing but the psoas major and also we can find the sympathetic right sympathetic chain we can also get the celiac ganglia okay so all these structures we can find. We can find also the L1 and L2 vertebra. We can find the, the lumbar arteries. On this side we are getting easy. So we are we can also get the right in our we also get distant posterior relation of the head. Immediately we will get the inferior vena Behind the inferior vena we will get the lumbar vertebra. Right, the grass of the diaphragm. Right, subas major muscle. Right, sympathetic trunk. Right, cilia ganglia. Right renal artery and both the renal veins. Because they will be with a right or left, both they will be into the inferior vena cava. Okay, this is the posterior position. Now we come to this area. This is the neck. Neck is a constricted part which is allowed. 2 centimeters. And most important thing about the neck is the formation of the total vein. We know this is the superior mesenteric vein and this is the semi vein. Going to form, this is the total vein. Total vein is formed just behind the neck of the pancreas. As because of this of this fact, the total vein or venous channel is intimately related to the posterior surface of the neck of the and yes, it is very, very difficult to excise the head of the pancreas. 
will get deflected like this. And another peritoneal fold will come, come out from the greater curvature and it will cover the transverse mesocotone and ultimately it will get deflected like this. So this is the transverse mesocotone. Okay. So this peritoneum is present in the rod. This is behind. So this is the peritoneum of the greater sac which covers the stomach. Then this is the greater omentum. Then it is reflected and ultimately it is reflected over the from the anterior border. So at the anterior border we can see the transverse mesocolon. So the transverse mesocolon is attached throughout the anterior border of the pancreas. Now, what, what is the posterior relation? We can all see, we can see Posteriorly, we can see the aorta. This is nothing but aorta. And if we go on the left side, then we can see this left crash of the diaphragm. It will cross the left crash of the diaphragm. It will cross the left swas major, it will cross the left sympathetic tongue, it, it will cross the left, the ciliar canilla, and ultimately it, there is one structure. Which makes an impression over here. That means the kidney, the left kidney and also the left kidney, along the left kidney, through the left kidney what enters? Left renal artery? Yes sir. What are the structures entered into the left? The kidney, yep. renal artery, yep. they are the left renal artery. What structure comes out? Yep. Renal vein yep. and also the ureter. So the, the structures in the hilum of the kidney, that means renal artery, left renal artery, renal vein and the pelvis of the left ureter. It is all in relation to the tail of the head of the pelvis. Body of the pancreas. Okay. So these are all the posterior relation to the body of the pancreas. Now about the small tail. The small tail. This is head. This is body, now this is the small tail. Suppose this is this one. This tail is related to the pancreatic impression of the spleen. And it is within a ligament, peritoneal ligament, which is called lino-renal ligament. Lino means split, renal means kidney. So it is within the lino-renal ligament. And this tail is, don't underestimate the tail. We should not underestimate the tail, especially we, when we are removing the spleen. When we are removing the spleen, the surgeon's, the 
that sergeant remains very cautious about that tail. When a sergeant is removing the spleen, which is called splenectomy, the sergeant is very, very cautious about the tail of the pancreas. Why? Because most of the eyelids of the lacquer hands are situated over the tail. So if they sacrifice or if they cut the tail, then patient will suffer from diabetes mellitus. Diabetes mellitus. Why? There is what that that is the insulin resistance. So what so define diabetes? So in type 2 diabetes, we are getting excess insulin, still there is so what is diabetes? It is a disease. Type 1, type 2, type 3, type 4, I mean, one type is the same. So, you have to do the same thing. That's 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 the same thing. मामूली से तो गलत हो It can also drain into the 
nuclear basic vent it can drain directly into the total vent okay what about the lymphatic supply the group between the head of the pancreas and the duodenum there we get superior and inferior pancreatic or duodenal lymph nodes okay there not only we will get the venous the arterial and venous channel we will also get the lymphatic channel which will drain into the ciliac group of lymph either to the ciliac group of lymph nodes or to the superior group of mesenteric lymph nodes and ultimately they will join ultimately into the drain into the cisterna cavi Okay. And from the system of Kylie, when it passes through the dark, the aortic opening of the diaphragm, it becomes the thoracic duct. So this is the lymphatic. Now about the arterial supply, uh, nerve supply. Nerve supply is sympathetic and parasympathetic. Parasympathetic from the vagus. It has got secretomotor function. And sympathetic. is coming actually from the thoracic splanchnic nerve through the ciliac ganglia then it reaches the gland what about the pancreatic duct it actually prevents it traverses from the left to right side of the pancreas okay Diverticular. This is the area of the bile duct diverticular. And 
ultimately this pipe that goes about and from here we get another diverticular mutation So this diverticulum and from here also a cystic So this is a binder common hepatoperitic diverticulum. From here we get the One diverticular for the pancreas. Okay. And here we get another diverticular. Okay. From the front, this is the this is the ventral pancreatic diverticular. And this is the dorsal pancreatic diverticular. Okay. And this ventral diverticula will, will rotate behind. During the rotation of the duodenum, it will rotate, it will rotate posteriorly. And ultimately it will come to this area. Okay. And this this is ventral pancreatic diverticular. This is the dorsal pancreatic diverticular. These two fuses and forms the pancreas. Okay. So the lower part of the head and unseated process is completed by this ventral pancreatic diverticula. And rest of the rest of the head, body and tail is formed by the dorsal pancreatic diverticula. Clinical anatomy. Very good. When this ventral diverticula it moves around the duodenum, which is called actually it splits into two parts. One goes behind, one goes in front. So ultimately it surrounds the Diodina. When it surrounds the diodina, that is called annular pancreas. The second one is the cancer head of the pancreas. Third one is the acute pancreatitis. It is nothing but auto digestion of the pancreas due, due to the activation of the protein dissolving enzymes like trypsin. Trypsinogen comes out, it comes in, in contact with the bile and gets activated into the trypsin. But when, if the bile, suppose there is a stone here and bile enters into the pancreatic duct, in obstruction, in, in obstruction, in jaundice. This while they go inside the pancreatic duct and pancreatic enzyme that is trypsinogen, they get activated in its active form that is trypsin. So there will be auto digestion of the pancreas, and that is a very fulminant case. About 80 percent of the patient dies. And the third one, the next one, the fourth one is the chronic pancreatitis, chronic insufficient, chronic affection of the pancreas, and that's all. Now about the spleen. We can see the spleen. Spleen is situated over the left hypocondrium.
mitochondrium. Now what is spleen? Spleen is basically a hemolymph organ. So it is related with blood and lymphatics. Within the lymphatics, we get the lymph nodes, we get the lymphocytes. Collection of the lymphocytes or lymphoid follicles. And here also we will get, if we can't open the spleen, we will get the white pulp. Those are the collection of the lymphocytes. And also the red pulp. So it's a lymphatic. And within the red pulp, we will get the RBCs and other things, the reticular fibers and so on and so on. So it's a hemolymph organ, white pulp and red pulp, hemolymph organ. And all the old RBCs are being destroyed within the, or old or inactive RBCs are being destroyed within the spleen. And it is situated and jet and during embryonic period, it also manufactures RBC, not in adult. In adult it can happen. Hemopoiesis can happen. Can you tell me when? It's an abnormal situation. In leukemia. <laughs> manufacture the RBC or leukomoid reaction you can manufacture the RBC now it is situated within the left hypochondrium and it is in relation to so many ribs this is 9 this is 10 and this is 11 ribs. So it is under the coverage of the ribs. 9, 10 and 11 ribs. And spleen follows Harry's dictum. Harry's dictum of odd numbers. That means 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, 11, all these are one odd numbers. 1 means the thickness is 1 inches. The breadth is 3 inches. Length is 5 inches. 7 ounces. The weight is 7 ounces. And 9 11. So they are in, under the coverage of these ribs and intercostal spaces. And this stain is generally is called as the axis. Somebody says 11 is the axis. So we should not go into the any we should not go into any controversy. So stain is the axis. Now about we can see one end, one in end is directed upwards and medially. This is called posterior end or medial end. And one end is directed downwards and laterally. Screen is actually hold like this. Is it in the anatomical position? It is hold in our palm and fingers. So the, these fingers are the ribs like the ribs. So this lateral end of the anterior extremity, medial end of the posterior extremity. It also follows the rule of two. That's all. This is posterior end and anterior end, two ends or two poles. One superior border, one inferior border. So it has got its follow the rule of two, two borders, two ends, and also it follows two and it has got two surfaces. The surface which you can see from inside, if we see it from the if you open the abdomen, abdominal cavity, if we see this part, this is the visceral 
surface and another surface is under the coverage of the ribs these are the ribs okay and the intercostal muscle this is 9 this is 10 this is 11 This 
area is called the island of the screen. The structure which are coming out, four to five segmental splenic veins, the lymphatics which are coming out. Okay. So from hilar to the posterior end, we also get a bridge. Bridge with elevated margin, which is also called as intermediate border. So superior border, inferior border is also called intermediate border. In between the hilum and the colic inflation, we get an area which is for the tail of the pancreas. So this is a pancreatic impression. Okay, this is for tail of the pancreas. Now, whole of the spleen, you can see it's a very shiny. It has got shiny surface. That means it is covered with the peritoneum except the hilum. And we get the peritoneal ligaments. We see this is the stomach, this is the spleen, and this is the kidney. Stomach here in front. On the left side, this is the spleen, and behind, this is the kidney. So, peritoneum covering the stomach from the beta carnation, also it is coming here, it covers the spleen and covers the kidney. And peritoneum from the, from the lesser sac, lesser sac means behind the stomach, which is peritoneum of the lesser sac, also covers the posterior leg. And we get one ligament between the stomach and the spleen. This is the gastrosplenic ligament. And also we get a ligament between the kidney and the spleen. Kidney and the spleen, this ligament. This is the glynorenal ligament. This is one ligament. And this is another ligament. One is gastro and this is the linorenal ligament. And if we this linorenal ligament, if, if we trace it above, it will touch the diaphragm. So that that peritoneum will also form a ligament from this spleen to the diaphragm. So linophrenic ligament from which the, the spleen is hanging. The spleen is hanging from the diaphragm. That is linophrenic ligament, which is also called the suspensory ligament of the spleen. Okay. So gastrosplenic linorenal. Okay. Through the liporanal ligament, we can see the entry of the splenic artery. Splenic artery will go inside the, this is the splenic artery along with the tail of the pancreas. This is the tail of the pancreas. This is the tail of the pancreas and the splenic artery is entering. Okay, to the liporanal ligament and ultimately enters into the spleen. During its journey, it gives branches to the stomach. Those are short gastric artery and left gastroepiploic artery. Short gastric and left gastroepiploic artery, which enters through the gastrosplenic ligament. So, gastrosplenic, linorenal, linophrenic. And another ligament Another peritoneal ligament is there Flexure to the under surface 
of the diaphragm. This is a ligament which actually gives a support to the spleen, which is called phrenico ligament, which is directly, it is not related. It is not within the spleen, but indirectly it, it supports the spleen. This is called phrenico-colic ligament. Gastrosphenic, linorenal, linophenic, and phrenico-colic ligament. This is called sus suspending ligament of the spleen. Okay. So these are the peritoneal ligaments which are related to the spleen. Okay. Now what about the arterial supply? Splenic artery. It divides into four to five branches and enters into the spleen. Okay. And within the spleen, it divides into smaller branches which, which are called the penicillin, smaller branches. And first it enters the white pulp. And within the white pulp we can see one eccentric artery. This is nothing but the branch of the penicillin. And ultimately then white pulp to red pulp, it enters the red pulp. And ultimately it enters the vein. And we just remember, within the spleen there are two circuits. One is open circuit and one is closed circuit. In open circuit, the blood actually, there is no vascular covering of the blood vessels. Blood actually escapes out within the tissue of the spleen and ultimately it comes through the sinusoids and ultimately goes into the veins. So that is open circulation. And also there is, apart from the open circulation, there is closed circulation. The penicillin artery which enters into the white pulp, then it enters the red pulp and it never loses its covering and ultimately drains into the vein, splenic vein. Okay, venules and then ultimately splenic vein. So just remember two system of artery, one is close system and only one is open system. A class of splenic circulation for the pulmona. On detail, what is it? Malpigian body, ellipsoid, splenic cells, interesting. So, there must be a class allotted for the splenic circulation. So, this is the visceral surface and this is the diaphragmatic surface. Over the diaphragmatic surface, please can see the peritoneum covering the spleen. One layer of peritoneum covering the under surface of the diaphragm. Then we get the diaphragm and outside the diaphragm we get 9, 10 and 11, 3. We see this is the phosphor diaphragmatic recess. I think plural cavity actually it, uh, it is continued up to the tenth rib and up to the eighth rib only the lungs, the left lung actually is continued. So in relation to the uh, spleen, we get the nine, ten, and eleven ribs and the diaphragm and the peritoneum. Okay. Now. Clinical anatomy. The nerve supply is more or less same the sympathetic and parasympathetic, sympathetic from the celiac anterior and parasympathetic from the, the celiac anterior, actually the, from the left casting nerve and, and uh, the, the most of the left casting nerve enters into the celiac anterior. From here we, we get the parasympathetic supply. Right fingers and left fingers. Okay. Now about the clinical anatomy. Spleen actually moves in this direction from the left hypochondrium to the right iliac fossa. We can feel when 
क्रॉनिक मायलॉट ल्यूकेमिया काला जर मेलेरिया वी कैन फील द फीवर ओके इन केस ऑफ चाई दिस पेरिटोनियल लिगामेंट्स एंड ऑल दिस रेडिकल ऑफ द पेरिटोनियल मींस दिस दिस स्ट्रक्चर ऑफ द लिगामेंट the distortion of the speed when we get the blood vessels many a times it can rupture during playing or during any injury in case of child splenic rupture and during its rupture there is huge a torrential hemorrhage inside the abdomen and it has to be diagnosed very early If it is missed, the pet, the child will die. So if there is any injury and patient is gradually it is collapsing, the child is collapsing. We must do a, a an urgent ultrasonography of the abdomen to see the hemoperitoneum so that there is a collection of the blood within the periphery. So it is a surgical emergency. One has to open and we have to remove. The spleen, which is called spleen. Spleen is not essential for life because after spleen exudate the patient can survive. Spleen is indicated in many anemias like hereditary spherocytosis. The blood vessel, the RBC is becomes spherical. It means after removal. And if sometimes in thalassemia, if we have to remove it, that's it. Okay. 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 Ok